So, this is the we have done that this is, is given as energy. So, fluctuations in energy when you plot that lo and behold it is a very good Gaussian, amazingly good Gaussian, another surprise of nature. And then the width of that fluctuation is the specific width. And that is the spring constant in my, so why it becomes Gaussian? There are two reasons of that and I will give first the mathematical then the physical or both can be considered mathematical. But before I go into that, look at this functional form. Why? Now remember E average is the value at the minima. And that is a macroscopic quantity that the average energy of the system. So, system must be minimum with respect to that average energy. So, I now first derivative will go to 0. So, second derivative will be this quantity which is the uh, sigma square which is the specific it. So, this is the reason why this one of the uh, explanation is that the total energy of the, uh, the energy, total energy of the system or the fluctuation in total energy is Gaussian. There was a question asked I think yesterday or day before yesterday and this is the answer to that question. Second important uh, explanation that comes from a very profound theorem of theory of probability that I described I think in my third lecture and I, in my book also I described that quite a bit that is called central limit theorem. Central limit theorem says that if your total observable let us say x capital X is a sum of a large number of small parts and if there is a weak correlation, correlation is allowed, is a correlation but the weak correlation between them, then the sum is Gaussian. This is called central limit theorem which is an exceedingly important part of statistical mechanics and I think I have discussed it a couple of times in my book and I think in my third lecture we discussed it and this is what Rajoshi keeps complaining that how many times we teach the students, the students forget, but this you should not forget. There is a strong law, there is a weak law and I told you mathematicians are not given this was also the person who worked on it, theory of errors and all these things goes back to Gauss. Gauss I think had one of the proofs long, long time ago. I think Gauss was after Shakespeare, um, I think somewhere uh, 1600 around that time or little later than 1600. I used to know all these things but forgetting. So, then central limit theorem says if I have something x which is sum over x n, n is large number and then x n are weakly correlated, then the p x an amazing theorem, just amazing theorem uh, that this is the central limit theorem perhaps one of the most and I told you mathematicians are not given to give big names. Uh, with chemists and physicists we just mutilate and insult the English language. But uh, they have a very rarely one thing like fundamental theorem of algebra, whole algebra is based on that theorem, whole complex analysis. This is the whole pro much of probability theory is based on this central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says that this is Gaussian. One of the ways you can do that which is take up any book of probability, they will do in terms of binomial theorem. Toss a coin or take a dice, then you will find the sum will become, go on adding 3, 6 if you are throwing a die and then, uh, then you will find that is Gaussian. Now all of you who do molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulation use this at very early stage of your simulation. Now tell me where, not quite Baba. 
you sample from a Gaussian distribution. How do you create the Gaussian distribution? You take you take random numbers we call I seed, call random numbers, add the random numbers. You know if you do not use a package like our days we used to, there was a function in Photon called RAND, but we used to write our own code usually uh, because we are always uh, pseudo random number and the not Gaussian correlation we used to do it ourselves by doing a, you can play around a little bit and make it much better. And uh, sometimes we used assembler language and uh, to make it more, more uncorrelated. However, one important thing you should do it yourself, you call a random number, call it 20, 12 times, add them up, you find the sum of the Gaussian. All it takes is 12, so I do not need to go to infinity. Strictly speaking, it has to be large, but in real world, just 12 gives it Gaussian. This is one of the reason many, many things in observed properties in nature are Gaussian. Okay. So then here is a table actually my student made it today uh, very quickly uh, from the book. But here energy at constant volume, then CV response function. So Z the thermodynamic quantity. So there are actually three things one should have had here. One is the perturbation one is the fluctuation and one is the response function or I would probably have done perturbation, response function, then microscopic interpretation. This is as I told you it is a profound result of statistical mechanics. Perhaps one of the most, I won't say the most, but one of the most profound result of statistical mechanics and it is amazing that it tells you what is specific heat. Okay. Then CP is that of enthalpy, then volume and number density give you isothermal compressibility and you have to work in different ensembles to get that. Uh, NPT will give you volume fluctuations okay. and grand canonical will give you number fluctuation. Please uh, listen carefully. This comes from NPT isothermal isobaric, this comes from grand canonical ensemble. You can calculate the fluctuations that give you both give you isothermal compressibility and they give you exactly same result. You can do the simulation here in one ensemble, another ensemble, you will find they are exactly the same. Okay. Magnetization is the external magnetic field, magnetization is the response and this is the response function. Then I put an external electric field, this is the response polarization and this is the response function, the electric constant. So all the time experiment is measuring dielectric constant without really knowing what the hell they are doing. But it is the theoreticians or responsibility to understand these things and that has happened, that is the way it has happened. The experimentalists much of the time need to work extremely hard to get a result uh, and they really have not much time for uh, the uh, this theory and all these things uh, and you will find they have a kind of disregard for us which is painful. But that is the way it is. Mm. Okay. So now there are certain very interesting results that I want to tell you and that you should know. Here is the specific heat, ice, then these are solids, ice, aluminium. Look at this. Uh, now you expect solid to have less fluctuations and their specific heat is to be the same, less. That indeed there is less. Okay. Now look at the things, liquid, look at that, ethanol is so much bigger, but water has almost twice the specific heat. Why? I will come to that. Liquid nitrogen, this one, benzene, this, benzene is so much bigger than water, but much small. Mercury is really has uh, much less specific heat. Hydrogen. Partly because this is an anomaly because they have the ortho para, para equilibrium. As a result of that, they have a very large uh, fluctuations. Helium has quantum effects in it, which allows it to really explore much larger energy fluctuations. But look at that, as you would expect, this is less, this somewhat more, and where this is little bit more. So then now it is a standard question we ask: why has water 
specific heat is that of more than twice of uh, benzene which is bigger than water and also bigger than ethanol. So, there is a question I am now asking you, explain why water has such large specific heat and that is very good for you otherwise you would die of fever, you know. Our uh, body, we are very lucky that large, uh, water has large specific heat because 70 percent of our body is water. Otherwise your protein, if temperature some comes outside your protein would become temperature of the body will rise and your protein will become unfolded and you die. Now you need to tell me why and how water has large, such a large specific heat. Huh? Right, it is due to hydrogen bond. There is a bit more than that, there is a good beginning, hydrogen bond certainly, if hydrogen bond not there then water would not be liquid first of all, it is only at 18, much much heavier things are uh, gas, but water because of hydrogen bonding. So it is hydrogen bonding, but what next? Ethanol also has hydrogen bonding, do not forget that. Ethanol has, ethanol forms three hydrogen bonding through through oxygen, one through hydrogen. Water forms, how many hydrogen bonds? Four, four hydrogen bonding. Still answer is not there. Come on, yeah that you are, you are saying the, is a semantics, you are just putting the same thing in, in words. Okay, I not, we will not be able to waste too much time here that the reason is that because of hydrogen bond, there are lot of excitations in the system. There is a, if you do the normal mode analysis, that means you can freeze water or take the temperature out and then do a uh, normal mode analysis means you calculate the density of states or you can even take water in a little lower temperature and do the velocity, velocity time correlation function and do a Fourier transform that will give you the oscillations and as a peak, you will find water has three pronounced peaks. One is about 50 centimeter inverse, that is because of rattling, but there is this peak at 200 centimeter inverse, which is hydrogen bond excitation. Now tell me, what is one kBT? Thermal energy, how much in centimeter inverse? Three hundred kBT. Kelvin, how much? 206 centimeter inverse, 1 kBT is 206 centimeter, you might look surprised but that is what it is. So 1 kBT 300 uh, Kelvin is 206 centimeter inverse and hydrogen mode excitation, the network is vibrating like that, that is a Raman active mode, that is 200 centimeter inverse. Then there is a libration which is about 600 centimeter inverse. So water because of the hydrogen bonding has all these collective excitations. So when you raise the temperature, then all these excitations get populated. So before temperature goes up, you need to populate them. And as a result of that kind of extensive network, not in ethanol because the ethyl groups is hydrophobic. So there is a local order, but this kind of extensive network we call hydrogen bond network that is so peculiar of water, that is not there. So this is a, a beautiful uh, slide that I think I will we'll, give it to them uh, to put it on the book, okay. So now this is what I have been talking, free energy expansion and the response functions. This because of the minimum or a quantity x is either pressure or y, then this is 0, but then the expansion becomes that in free energy and these are the expansions. In energy fluctuation is a specific heat, volume fluctuation, compressibility and uh, the if I have the fluctuations in the system is the, uh, the, the magnetic susceptibility. So what is important, these free energy expansions 
who free energy second derivative are these response functions. Those are the same functions that give you, that tell you how much a system going to react. And they gave in the example of water, it is essential for you and your body that water has large specific heat, otherwise you die off. And exactly that have these quantities are the ones which are most important, most important constitutive properties of a material. They are the ones which measured in the very beginning, okay. Okay, this is the end. So, they, my students are fond of cartoon. So, they are, uh, they, they say that we, I am trying to fluctuate because it's certain life must have some responsibility. Yeah. So, they are not great cartoons. But you know, statistical mechanics is such a difficult subject, it is good to have some cartoon than no cartoon. So, this is a picture of Einstein I really like. So, we now, this is a chapter which you have to read and uh, again, the same kind of things that I have been talking here, that how, the same thing, uh, repeating again and the equations from there. But there are a lot of very nice things that are discussed here and quite a detail because this is my favorite chapter. Uh, so, energy fluctuation specifically the derivation is given here is a little better than what is given here. You can see the derivation in full glory. Uh, sequence is little different from what I told you here. Then the, then the fluctuation in other response functions, full derivation is given here, okay. The full derivation is given here and uh, these both grand canonical and NPT ensemble and then there are some very nice uh, system size dependence on fluctuations that we just discussed. Yes. No, nonlinear phase transition. All free energy is minimum with respect to all thermodynamic properties. Whatever you choose, as Einstein showed, there are two independent variables. So, you have to be like he. If you look at uh, Einstein's statistical physics, then somewhere around chapter, I think, uh, Landau Lipschitz, the old second edition that I studied, somewhere in after, after 30 or 40, around that, he had this, Landau has this chapter on fluctuations. And there he discusses this, that the Einstein chose, selected two independent variables, entropy and volume. And as I told you, Paramount he also discusses pressure and temperature, uh, Landau, because there is connection with the uh, hydrodynamics and discussing very important experimental results, which can also be due entropy and volume, but it gets very complicated. Pressure and temperature is a better variable. The Rayleigh noise spectra, the three peaks, that is explained by hydrodynamics. Okay, so it is minimum. Only thing you have to make sure that you have the two independent variables. Do not take two dependent variables, then you will screw up. Only near a phase transition, only near a phase transition, this spring constant just goes. That is why it is it, like here. So long I am here, I am, I am here, I am stable. But when I come here, it is no longer stable. That exactly happens in phase transition the system falls out of the cliffs and it forms out of the cliff, this quantity just becomes like that, flat. Do we call it softening, very important term in physics, softening of uh, modes. Yes. Absolutely. I don't know why you are confused. Free energy has to be minimum, otherwise it's not stable. It has to be caged in. That's why I'm talking of spring constant. Just take a spring, do that. The spring comes back, right? So you are applying a force, spring getting elongated. Who determined? I could have put that also. That I gi give a force, elongation is L. That is the omega square x. So that has to be. You know, this is a good question, but you have to think and make yourself believe because these are the fundamental and exact 
results. That I told you in book I had, and I wish I kept it. That is really statistical, very significant result from statistical mechanics. Explaining your high school thermodynamics and physics is coming from this chapter. We don't question it, but we should actually think about it because it's just too fundamental to ignore. Otherwise, there's no point of doing science. This is really beautiful. Okay, so this is same thing I discussed. Uh, this broad distributions and now going back to different ensemble, micro canonical, grand canonical ensemble and the maximum means now omega has to be maximum, okay. And then partition function has to, I told you partition function is the quantity that is maximum. And I explained in the morning why partition function is maximum. Partition function is maximum because e to the power minus e by kbt as I said or omega is that that particular state is selected which has maximum number of uh, microscopic states. And then this is what we discussed and uh, this is what we discussed. There was a question actually one of you asked why it is Gaussian and this is the reason why it is Gaussian it will be fundamental level. And uh, the distribution of specific heat and thermal conductivity all these things we discussed. So, but I would uh, strongly recommend you take a look into this book, this my book because I do not think there is any other book that has discussed this in so beautifully except I think Patria statistical physics. But then he does not connect it to this water specific heat and the kind of things we physical chemists or chemists deal with. That is not their cup of tea. They will go to liquid metals and not interesting as I said mercury is uh, specific it is point uh, how much point 0.2 solids specific it is so small except when they go to phase transition then specific it diverges. Order disorder transition. Order disorder tends in aluminum and manganese and there goes order <coughs> disorder transition. But that because you have this multiple ways to arrange things with different energy. So, a binary alloy undergoes a spectacular phase transition. Anything else? We will next class Monday we will start with the applications of the partition function and describing some way uh, and getting some very, very important results which are even today used in drug design or all kinds of thermodynamic uh, thing packages from NIH and other people use what will be very strict. I never knew that in drug design we use the Sakut tetrod equation which is derived with uh, monatomic gas, ideal monatomic gas.